An ancient professor of mine told me that story one day. It's a story on the African American who was walking down the street on a beautiful Sunday afternoon and quite suddenly a white supremacist man burst in front of him and slapping slap him in the face for no apparent reason. The man stood still and the white supremacist slapping a second time. And at that moment, the man took out his coat, calmly rolled up his sleeve, and beat the white man severely, like, whoa, what a fight. And when other people learn about this, they ask the man, hey, what's about that? Are you supposed to be a good Christian? He said, whoa, yes, I am, the man said. You know, I did exactly what the Bible says. The guy hit me, I showed him the second cheek, and since Jesus uh, gave no instruction about that, well, I guess I can do whatever I want. Up to this day, I'm not sure what was the point the professor wanted to make that day. What I learned from this, be careful about literal interpretation about biblical text. Uh, you probably know the expression to fight fire with fire. Uh, it referred to a conflict. It says, well, make sure you bring the same tool that your opponent will have. You know, at least try to be even, if maybe better. Um, if someone insults you, well, you have to insult that person back. If someone hurt you in one way, you have to find a way to have your revenge and hurt that person back. Well, too often we forget that fire, literally or in a figurative state, bring pain, bring destruction. And to reply in the same way, bring even more destruction, even more pain. And for sure, rarely a solution. It's like old wisdom story of some man enter into your house, set it on fire. You can leave your house, run after the man, catch him, beat him up. A lot of story of beating. Anyway, beating up, him up, but your, your house is still burning. The common logic when you ask people what to do with fire is not to fight fire with fire is to fight fire with water. You don't try to do something that will worsen the situation. You try something that will improve the situation. Well, in the gospel of this week, Jesus says, love your enemy to do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. And then a little further, he said the famous, if anyone strike you on one cheek, offer also the, the other also. And from anyone who takes away your coat, do not will withhold even your shirt. And often people, um, through these words, see Christian as some sort of a a mat, a punching bag, you know, people you can abuse and you, you won't do anything about it. It's almost like a Christian who should hold a sign like, abuse me, abuse me, I want red to light, rich to light, I promise. Let's make a point clear. This passage does not condemn, condemn violence, abuse all sorts of violence, genocide. This is not what it is about. We're called to resist evil. And there's no doubt in my mind that this is called a call for us Christians. The thing is, how do we do it? And a little further, it says, do to others as you would have them do to you phrase also known as the golden rule because it's found in the wide majority of major religion around the world. 
It reminds us that we might not be able to control someone else's anger, behavior, resentment, but we have control over our lives. We cannot stop someone to act like a barbarian, but we don't have to become a barbarian too. There's a way to resist evil that does not bring more fire, more violence in this world. There's a way to influence others with our behaviors, with our words, with the solution we can find that they escalate the violence and the hurt and the pain and the grief. Some would say, yeah, that's, that's beautiful, real world. It does not work. Well, tell that to Martin Luther King and his fight for civil, civil rights in the South in 1950s. U.S. South. Yes, it was not easy. A lot of people were hurt. But they won without killing people. T tell that uh, to Mahatma Gandhi in India. How his non-violence resistance were able to open the eyes of the British people that it was time for them to go away and stop this colonization. Tell that to Viola Desmond. We're in February. It's the Canadian history of Black, uh, the Black History Month in Canada, in the U.S. This month, uh, Viola Desmond, uh, a woman of color who refused to sit at the back of a theater. She decided to sit where only white people could sit. She hit no one. She injured no one. Of course, she was arrested. It's not easy. But still, those laws have been changed. Those practices are not acceptable anymore. And maybe that's the challenge for us, to find different ways, new ways, to be a little more creative than you hurt me, I will hurt you back. To find solutions. Not to say anything goes. No, to find solution to the problems, and God knows we have problems in our world. How, would, how can we bring more harmony, comprehension, a little less racism, a little less confrontation in our dealing with the people around us, at work, at school, in churches? We have tools at our disposal. And furthermore, we have imagination to find new tools if the tools we have are not sufficient. And that's the challenge we receive from Jesus this week for all of us. And that's what I hope you will try to identify those places when you might be tempted to fight fire with fire and to say, no, nope, I'm not going to walk that road. I will try to use something else to solve the situation. Once again, thank you for watching. Uh, I remain the lectionary man, Reverend Stéphane Vermette. And until next time, take care of yourself and bye-bye.